yes, I think it's a problem. Um, and Mark, maybe you can come and sit in my room one day because ten's not enough. Mm. I've wanted to say this to you for so long. <laughs> ten's not enough. Does the insufficient funding and support for the mental health care system contribute to that increase and rise in mental health issues within the young Australians? And what potential strategies are there out there that we could do to combat this issue? The ten is simply not enough. So if someone's in a crisis mode, so I have plenty of patients with diagnoses like depression, generalised anxiety, bipolar mood disorder, borderline <clears> personality <throat> disorder. When someone's in crisis mode and they're seeing a psychologist weekly or fortnightly, those sessions are gone in about two to three months. And even with the mental health care plan, the rebate that the patient gets is still quite insufficient. And there's no bulk billing psychologists. In mm. metropolitan Melbourne, where I work, like, good luck. It's, mm. it's crisis mode. Mm. So it does impact quality of care because I end up seeing patients when the sessions run out doing containment. I'm not a psychologist. I use the, the strategy I've, I've learned on the job. Um, I'm trying to prescribe lifestyle interventions, the physical activity, the sleep hygiene, the caffeine reduction. But it might mean that sometimes I need to turn to medication when I wouldn't normally because I don't have the psychological strategies. My patients can't access it. So in short, yes, I think it's a problem. Um, and Mark, maybe you can come and sit in my room one day because ten's not enough. Mm. I've wanted to say this to you for so long. <laughs> ten's not enough. Ronnie, how bad is it in the regions? I mean, we, we haven't even talked about the shortage of psychiatrists and we've actually been talking about this for decades and, you know, full disclosure, I was the Minister for Mental Health for four years in New South Wales and it's really tough, it's really complex and everybody, I think, is genuinely trying to do better. But it is a real problem when you don't have access to service. And the, the thing is, too, it's the other effects that it places on health professionals. So if you're a mental health nurse in Cooma and you're getting a psychiatrist that visits every three months and a psychologist that you can have virtually every two months, that pressure on that mental health nurse is enormous. And they can't, you know, so, so it's this perpetual cycle that we're in. So... I don't understand too, and, I, I, and I'm not being political because it's both sides. I mean, my side was in for a long time and that they didn't, Labor didn't just create this shortage of psychiatrists. It's been way before this. And we, we need to just stop talking and start doing because we, and we can't, we can't put time frames on people's therapy mm. because that pressure for them to think, well, you know, if I'm not better in six sessions, I've only got four to go. I mean, that's really mm. poor.